Eve. She's the first woman. She's the first wife. She's the first mother. And she's the first Bible corrector. And she sets forth a standard today that is found in the New Testament, which we'll look at later. So, Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. A fact from the Bible about Eve. It says, Adam called his wife, that's the woman, the first wife. He called his wife named Eve. Because the reason, she was the mother of all living. So Eve is meaning the mother of all living. Adam named Eve. So when we think about Eve, we think about her name came from her father, which is interesting in the Bible, in the Hebrews, it was usually the mother or the mother's side that named the children. So with that, let's get an understanding of chapter 5, verse 2. Let's get an understanding what the Bible says. Always what the Bible says rather than man. It says in Genesis 5, 2, male and female created he them. God made male and female, and there's no other. If you are another sex, you are in violation of the Holy Bible. You are in violation of what the Word of God says, what God says, what the Holy Spirit says, what Jesus says, and you are in great sin, but we're not talking about that. That was five cents, and if you don't have it, that's okay. He created, verse 2, male and female created them. That's the man and the woman. And blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. So here's something. The first man and woman, the first male and female, God named her Adam. It was Adam that gave her her name in chapter 30, verse 20. Not God. God named her Adam. When God would address Eve, he said, Adam. So that's the reason why a, a female carries her, her father's name. Now, my daughter, Rachel Ann, carries my name of Hayward. Then when a girl gets married, she is to carry on the name of her husband, Mrs. So-and-so. But Eve was named Eve and called Eve by Adam. God called him and her Adam, according to the scriptures. Now, chapter 2, 22. 2, 22. It says, verse 21, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on, on Adam. He slept anesthesia and took one of his ribs and closed up the fresh instead and said there God an anesthesiologist and God the surgeon. This is the first surgery ever of mankind. It was God. Surgeons and anesthesiologists today are supposed to be a type of God. Because the first one in the Bible is God. The first patient was Adam. In order to do what God was going to do, he had to put the man to sleep. And many believe that that deep sleep, deep sleep is God caused Adam to die. Like Jesus died for his bride. Adam's going to die for his bride. You say, you believe that, Styler? Yes, I do. You mean you believe that rib and all? I do. Because watch. This is what I believe. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, Adam, 
made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You believe that? Yes, I do. If you don't believe that, you're in sin. Plain and simple. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones, the rib. A rib is a bone. So Adam knew what God did in flesh my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So Adam gives woman to, the, to his wife. He says, she is woman because she was taken out of man. Later on we read, she is, Adam says, she is Eve. She's the mother of all living. But God named her, God called her Adam. The word woman came from Adam. Eve came from Adam. Adam came from God. Bible. I hope you got a King James 1611 Bible. If you don't, throw your Bible in the garbage and get a King James 1611 Bible. Wherefore shall a man leave his father and mother, which Adam doesn't have? Adam was given a revelation of something that he did not have. Adam and Eve did not have a mother and father. But Adam would know that there would be a mother and father. You know, we make we make the joke or we had the trivia. Well, what did Adam and Eve have that we don't have? You'll say parents. But Adam knew there would be parents. And shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So a marriage, when when flesh joins flesh, you become one. That woman was taking adultery, and she, and she said, well, I don't have any husbands. And Jesus said, you're right to say, you got, I think it was four or five, and the one you have now is not your husband. She joined flesh with flesh with four or five men, and, and you know, she didn't have a license. But still, she was husband and wife. It's flesh joining the flesh. That when you take a woman and marry her and come together with her, you are one person. You are Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so. My wife, Lisa, was, was Mr. and Mrs. Hayward. She became known as Mrs. Stiley Hayward. We were Mr. and Mrs. Stiley Hayward. We were one. Through marriage. The one flesh together. And it says, funny how it says, a man shall leave his father and mother. Well, you didn't, Jacob stayed, stayed with his, his wife's father. Isaac left his father for his land. So, there's the woman, there's Eve, there is Adam, there's the first marriage. All in the first few chapters of the first book of Genesis, the life. Okay, so, we have that. Now, Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent in Revelation 12 will tell us Revelation 12 will tell us that old serpent is Satan. 12, 9 and 3 and 20 verse 2 will tell you that serpent is Satan. We're not going to look at that. Was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Where did whales come from? Where did camels come from? Where did mice come from? Where did dogs come from? Where did God? Where did where did woman come from? She came out of man. Where did man come from? Came from a pile of dirt. 
So you believe all that? I got more evidence through the Bible than you got with uh, whatever you believe. I'm going to stay with the old King James 67, 66. Oh, the old King James 1611. Not 16. Okay. He said, the serpent said. It's funny how this serpent starts talking and Eve's like, uh, what are you doing talking? There's no surprise. Maybe the animals talked. You ever seen cartoons? Animals talk in cartoons. He said unto the woman, Yea, positive, hath God said, the word of God, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now what the first thing Satan does, the first thing Satan says to mankind, recorded in the Bible, Revelation 12, 9, and 3, and 20, verse 2, that, that serpent is, that old serpent is Satan. What he says, the first thing to the woman is, yea, positively, questions and puts in doubt what God says. When Satan throws not God, confusion, doubt. That's not God. You ever have, if you're, you know, you read your Bible and, and, and you love the Lord Jesus Christ and you're saved and you, and you ever be reading the Bible and this, in your thought, you know, how could that be? You ever been reading through Noah's Ark and just, how did he get all those animals in that boat? That's Satan doing what he's doing to Eve right now. You ever read something about it? That's that is just per, per, come on. That's Satan. And what he is doing to you is what he's doing to Eve. He's putting or trying to put that seed of doubt in. Yea, did God say it? Because the Holy Spirit has said Genesis one only to. Revelation 22. That's all the Holy Spirit. And Satan wants you to look at the Holy Spirit and say, yeah, really? And that's the first thing he does to man. Yeah, did God really say it? And notice how Satan goes to the woman, not the man. And the Bible says that, that Paul said the woman is the weaker vessel, or Peter. Peter and Paul said that she's the weaker vessel. She's the emotional one. And, and listen, you don't like that. You think it's sexism and all that. You just shut up. Get saved by, 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 the, by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And put your nose in the Bible. Okay? Because there's only one way is through the Bible. And for the serious Bible reader and the Bible study, because I've heard Christians say it, I've heard preachers say that you know, there's sometimes that Satan will come in and he'll put that down. Yea, as God said. And the woman said, verse 2, to the serpent, Notice how it says, the woman said, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, uh, excuse me, of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, God, quoting God, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, least he died. Okay. So let's see what God said. 2.16. Hold your place in 3, but 2.16. 2.16. 
2.16, the Lord God commanded the man, Eve's not around yet. Eve doesn't show up to 2, what was it, 23, 22, 21 and 22, Eve doesn't show up. So Eve's not around for this. So what did Adam tell her? What are you telling your wife, sir? What are you telling your children, sir? What are you telling your congregation, pastor? I don't know if we can blame Eve all the way. Maybe it was Adam's fault. I don't know. But watch. All right. God said unto the man. He commanded the man, of every tree of the garden thou may freely eat. All right, hold on. Three, two. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Where is freely? Where is the word freely? Oh, no, Eve's the first Bible corrector. Eve removed the word freely. For what God said. Modern Bibles remove words out from what the King James said. You know an important word that they remove? Some of them? The blood. Some of them remove Lord. Some of them remove complete verses. Making the Ethiopian eunuch get in the water be rather say I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. They removed that. Eve took out freely. That's a Bible revision. Back to chapter 2. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Let's see what Eve says. Chapter 3. Verse 3, but of the tree, but excuse me, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in, what happened to the knowledge of good and evil? She removed the knowledge. She removed the tree definition. The knowledge of good and evil. She took that out. Which is in the midst of the garden. It says. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God did not say. 16 years later, Where that tree was. She added. Mist of the garden. That wasn't in the originals. Eve has subtracted. Eve has added to what God said. Now let's read on. So God said, The tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Eve says in chapter 3, God has said, Thou shalt not eat of it. Okay. Neither shall ye touch it. Now, I challenge you to go to chapter 2, read all the verses of chapter 2, of 20, 25 verses. Go read the 25 verses of chapter 2, especially read chapter uh, 2, verse 15 and 16 and 17, and find the word touch it or touch Eve added the word touch. God didn't say touch it. Eve did. But not God. So she has added to the word of God. Eve is your Bible corrector. Eve is your first Bible revision committee. And we're not even four verses, five verses, until after she was created. And then it says, 
least ye die. Chapter 2, verse 17. Thou shalt surely die. Look at that. She changed the words meaning from least ye die, from surely thou shalt die. She added in the midst of the garden, and she took away the word freely and of knowledge of good and evil. Friend, that's what your, your your modern Bibles, that's what your Alexandrian texts, that's what, uh, from, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of their name, Westcott and Hort. That's what your modern Bibles do. They do what Eve did. Change by adding and subtracting and making a word that's not the word That was Eve. That's our great, 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 grandmother, Eve. And then she did what God told her not to do, or Adam, or six. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit. Does never, never, never does it say apple. It. We don't know what fruit it was. You have added to the Bible when you say or draw a picture of an apple. You have added to the Bible. You have sinned against the Holy Spirit by saying apple when it never, ever, in 66 books, does it say apple. Stop sinning. Just say fruit. That's good enough. Desire to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat. What did God say? What did God say? God said, The day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And then she dies. I don't know how old she was. I don't know. Does the Bible tell us what age she dies? I don't think so. We know what age Adam dies. Not eat. Adam lived uh, 930 years, then he died. Well, they didn't die that day. They died a spiritual death. But we're not going to look at that right now. But they died. Eve died. God was right, and Eve was wrong. Everyone that is born of Adam, except Enoch, and, uh, Elijah died. Elijah's coming back to the tribulation period and he's going to die then. So, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, oh, excuse me. 2 Corinthians 11. Verse number 3. Paul writes to the Corinthian church. On this side of Calvary. For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, Jesus. That I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, at least by any means, as the serpent, Genesis 1, I mean, Genesis 3, beguile Eve, Genesis 3, through subtility, Genesis 3, 1, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So, Satan corrupted and beguiled E, Paul says. First Timothy, First Timothy, chapter two, verse eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Keep your mouth quiet. 
But, uh, yeah, I know. But what's the Bible say? Sunday school, a woman gets up and says something. No, you don't. Church allows it. Church is wrong. The church is not perfect. God's Bible is. Let the women learn learn the same. When it comes to learning the Bible, women be quiet. Now, if, if you have an intermission, you have before the service, in between the services, the women can talk, you know, whatever they want. But as soon as it comes time for the teaching where the man stands up and you got the Bible, the woman should be quiet. Quiet. In Corinthians, it says if she's got anything, she's to ask her husband. Ask her husband. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor assert the authority over man, but to be in silence again. So a woman's not to teach the Bible. She's not to preach the Bible over a man. You say, what about children? And it's like, she can do that. Let's say a woman's 30 years old. No one over 30 years old is she to teach. Under 30 years old? Okay, do it. If she's got a, a women's Bible study group, okay, they can talk. There's no man. They can teach the children's Sunday school and, and, and the children under her age. The moment a man walks in there and he is older than she is, she's to be silent. Pastor opens the door, pops his head in, she's to be quiet. That's what the Bible says. It's not what I'm saying. It's black and white. For Adam was first born, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Adam took the fruit because his wife took the fruit. But it was the wife that the serpent deceived. That little conversation she was having back and forth with the serpent, she was deceived. That serpent at no time said, wait a minute, Eve, wait, hold, Eve. That's not really what God said. But as Eve misquoted the scripture, the devil dug in more and more and worked on her to look at that fruit and to desire that fruit, that she took that fruit and she ate that fruit. Adam took the fruit because he loved his bride. Jesus went to the cross because he loves his bride. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved, you are the bride of Jesus Christ and your love is Christ's love. That Christ died like Many believe Adam died. I believe Adam died. Now, let me show you something here. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. Revelation 12. I want to show you where, what the Bible says. Revelation 12, verse 9. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent, Genesis 3, called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world, began with Eve. There it is. 
write it down. Now, um, I'm going to look at one more place if I, if I can find it. If I can't, we're done. If I can, we've got one more place. I didn't think about this earlier. Let me see if I got this concordance. Okay, forgive me. Can't turn the pages. Okay. Oh, I get a hard time with my fingers. Okay, husband. Uh, okay, First Corinthians fourteen, and then we'll be done. First Corinthians fourteen. I didn't think about this when I did. First Corinthians fourteen, and I gotta find the first number. First Corinthians fourteen. Oh. Oh. Why well, didn't I remember the verse? Fourteen. Let me go back here. Let me go back to the chords. Look again. Find the what verse number. I apologize. Turn the pages. Oh, come on. Again, I truly all day. All right, let's first Corinthians thirty five, fourteen thirty five. And 34. First Corinthians 14, 14, 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. There it is. Have you got it? The lie of the seeing church age does not do what the Bible says. We are the Bible Baptist Church. Well, that's not what it means. Well, Paul wrote to, to two people. The church is in Corinth and to Timothy. Women, silence. Why? Because Eve spoke instead of Adam. And because Eve spoke, all the population of Adam and Eve has been cursed by sin. Because we read that Eve was deceived, not Adam. I don't know why Adam didn't speak. But, you know, I know some men, they can't speak unless they get their wife's permission. There are some men that they're just henpeck under their wife. There are some men that their wife rules the world. Rules. And the Bible says, women in silence in church. It's that simple. 34. Let your wife keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted on them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. We're not under the law. But Paul brings up the law.
And if they will learn anything, all right, they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for the women to speak in the church. Well, the topic of chapter 14 has been tongues. But you don't speak tongues when you got a question. You go home and say, honey, what did the pastor say? What did the pastor mean? And the fact is that the husband is the spiritual leader of the house. And I know there are many people right now who want to shoot me, who want to kill me because I made such a bold statement that women are not to speak in the church and they're going to get run to the Greek and they're going to run to the Hebrew. They're going to run to their knowledge and all that, but they're not going to run to this Bible. They're not going to run to the black and white of the English of the Bible. They're not going to see that Paul wrote to one church saying women keep silent and Paul wrote to Timothy that the women keep silent. They're not going to run to that. And they're going to say that's old and archaic. But Grandma Eve spoke up and not Grandpa Adam for whatever reason. And all the world was brought in sin. That during the life of the scene church age, Paul writes and says, let them be quiet. I think women got a perfect good sense to, to say things and all that. Just not in the group. Especially when you're dealing with tongues. But we're not under tongues anymore. And tongues is a language, not this heavenly garbage you know, of speaking of an, you know, you don't even know what you're saying. That's garbage. But that verse there, that's not about tongues. That's the woman's got a question. She's to ask her husband. Husband, you better be ready to give an answer. Because your wife is under you, not the pastor. Now in church, she's under the pastor. But let her not make the pastor her source of spiritual power and not you, hubby. So what we see is Eve came right out the devil saw Eve, and that could be another reason, too. The devil knows who to go after, the weaker vessel. And we live in a great, wonderful age where the world and the church is wrong. But the Bible will always be right, and archaic preaching that I am, that people don't like. But... That's what the Bible says.